Hello everyone, this is Dwight Woods, the Jeet Kune Do Rebel, and welcome to today's uh, episode number 113 of the Jeet Kune Do Dialogues with uh, Vern Rochon of Rochon Art. As you guys are logging in, if you'd be uh, kind enough to say where you're logging in from and uh, hit the like button, and feel free to continue doing so throughout the uh, dialogue. Uh, also, if you're w watching this over on the YouTube, the final edit video, uh, be sure to subscribe uh, to the channel over there and uh, hit the notification bell. And since you're on the YouTube, please subscribe as well to the um, I Love Jeet Kune Do broadcast channel. Uh, if you enjoy my work and you'd like to support the program, uh, visit jkdrebel.com. Uh, forward slash store or just click on the rebel gear link and check out our offerings but of course the best thing you can do is to share this video talk about it uh, spread the word about the Jeet Kune Do dialogues all right that looks good oh I like that shirt I've got you have you got me yeah yeah there you are yeah no, I was saying, I was saying, I like that shirt, man. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Let me silence my phone. I don't want to get any embarrassing robo phone calls. Uh, that's fine. That's fine. All right. Oh, man. I think I discovered what it was. It was my, um, my, uh, what do you call it? VPN, the uh -huh. private network. I think that, I think that's what it was. I had never... I had never used Zoom with that set up, so I think that was guarding you too well. <laughs> <laughs> no, and I'm thinking, oh man, because my my sense of you is that you're a very deliberate guy, and I'm like, oh my god, this is so embarrassing because now, you know. <laughs> oh, no, no. The one thing about, in fact, um, my opinion shared by many, the main thing about GKO is its flexibility, its adaptability. So. You know that's that's what life's about yeah but you don't but you you i don't know there's just something about maybe it's the do you, do you have a military background i have i've not been in the military i've worked with a ton of them i'm familiar with the culture um, right but i've got a a, a law enforcement background right um, okay i, I that that obviously. i know mm -hmm. but i wondered if 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 you know perhaps military had because again my sense of you is that you're just like a like a no nonsense straight ahead guy. <laughs> when that is necessary, I am. But um, okay. I've, been, I've been known for a lot of nonsense in my day. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll I'll go with that. I will go with that. All right. So I um, in I shut down everything on my computer in um, when when I had all that that mess going on. So I'm just making sure that yeah we are recording. Okay. Okay. All right. I was going to ask if this is will still allow you to record. Yeah. 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 All right. Uh, so I let me find my notes on because um, I actually prepared for this. Okay. Really. Oh yeah, I mean, as much as I agree, I agree with you with uh, you know the JKD. You know what? Let me ask you this, because I found you never owned a school, right? I had a commercial school on Highland you Boulevard did. in Hollywood for about six months. Uh, before that, it was private. Now, I prefer private. I've been doing that ever since. Right. Well, I found it too cumbersome. Uh, I did okay. the instructing and I had a partner who took care of the business and it yeah. lasted for that long before we kind of grew apart. Yeah, okay, all right. Because I, I noticed in your bio on the website that it said that you had taught commercially. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I, wanted, I, wanted to ask, I, I wanted to ask you about that. Okay, so that was only for like six months you said, huh? Six months, yeah, it's negligible. Yeah, yeah. But well, I, okay. So the reason why I brought that up is because when I ran my school for a long time, that's what I did. I went with the flow. Mm -hmm. And then it got to a point where I realized that uh, that didn't work as well as you might want it to in business. Unexpected things tend to happen. 
you, you know, right? So then I, um, so then I just, um, I, I had to, you know, I had to give that up and become more structured, mm -hmm. right? Now, what, what do you think it would have taken for you to continue running a commercial establishment? Oh, I would have had to dedicate more to it because I had a full-time job um, at the okay. time. That was done after hours. Uh, and I think if I had dedicated more time, more energy, and more, um, more risk, <laughs> yeah, upon its success, I would have put more into it and insisted on things that I just kind of shined on. Okay. Uh, but, Do you have any regrets about not having pursued that? No, not at all. Not at all. Because I still teach. Uh, right. That part is still true. And I find that teaching privately uh, by appointment, um, it, back to flexibility, it allows a lot wider latitude, a lot more range of flexibility. Mm -hmm. uh, I try to make myself as available as possible and my students contact me usually by text or email, or whatever, to set up a class and we do it that way. And if I can fit in with them, I do. I always try. But if, uh, you know, life happens, things right. come up. I, hey, how, how, is the, how is the atmosphere of uh, a private lesson with you, how does that compare or contrast, compare to or contrast with your time with uh, Sifu Puti? It, pretty, pretty similar. It's, it's yeah. not strictly formal. Right. But we do cover the material we need to cover and, and uh, to the extent necessary. Yeah. No, because I read on your bio, it, it was, it was kind of interesting because you said, you know, sometimes we would just be hanging out, but then we, it would turn into a, a class. It would yes. turn into a lesson. Yes. <laughs> you know, I, I would go to the house and we'd go to lunch or whatever and come back home. We'd start talking and the next thing you know, we're hitting bags and folks' gloves and each other. Right. Yeah. Oh man, that's, that, uh, that's uh, okay. All right. Um, again, because my sense of you is that you're like this deliberate guy, I even have a, like a set of chronological questions. <laughs> oh, fire away. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm like, okay, you got to ask him first about his, his last name because it's a French last name. Correct. Yes. Right. Okay. So then that has to lead to the fact that you are a uh, Louisiana native. Yes. Okay. See, that, don't admit that to too many people. I know, but see, but that was that was my thing. I go, okay, you've got to get everything in order for this guy, otherwise he's not. Good. It's not like I'm going to reach. No, I was <laughs> so I was so stressing out over it, and um, I got I oh shoot, um, somebody made a comment when when I put up the postcard on <laughs> Facebook. Um, Joseph Riggio was Riggio was it? Jim Riggio. Jim Riggio. He yeah. is a dear, dear friend. Uh, okay. We started out as as uh, you know he was a student of mine, but um, their family at this point, he and his wife. Yeah. Marge. Yeah. Yeah. That that happens um, a fair amount. I mean, because something similar happened between you and Sifu Potit and uh, Sifu Potit Joseph, right? Yeah, Fran. Yeah, they are. Yeah. They, they were. They have, Jerry was like my second father. I mean, yeah, he, he, yeah. I knew him uh, 28, almost 30 years. Wow. Um, and, and I miss him too. I miss yeah, him. I, yeah, I can imagine. I can imagine. Um, all right. So, okay. So going back to uh, chronology. So to tell me about this, this thing. Again, uh, um, compare and contrast. You started in Goju under one of two brothers, right? Under Carrie Fournet. Yeah, I, uh, Fournet. I met Carrie Fournet. Fournet. Okay. We were in school together. Um, I was like 14 and mm -hmm. Carrie and I were in school together. And Carrie's brother uh, was either still in the army or was coming back or whatever, but I didn't know him at that time. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, Ernie had studied Goju Ryu. And once he went to the army and joined the special forces, this is the literal special forces, the U.S. Army Special Forces. Their nickname is the Green Beret, mm -hmm. but the, the technical name is U.S. Army Special Forces. Mm -hmm. And he started using what he learned, and he found out it didn't quite work the way he, he thought it would. So he started making changes, started modifications. He started uh, adjusting. Yeah. And when he got home, he joined the police department, as did Carrie and I. So that's when I met Ernie, 
and I had been with Carrie since uh, like 72. And I met Ernie and we just uh, started working out in the backyard and uh, using equipment and beating each other up. And uh, Ernie had a heavy bag set up. We would, um, this is funny, we would get cardboard boxes and lay over the heavy bag enough to protect it and practice blades, knives, uh, batons. Yeah. We would go out, since we were police officers, we would go out to the range and uh, Ernie was a firearms instructor, and we would do combat shooting. We had a combat course laid out. Mm -hmm. it, was, uh, it was a pretty comprehensive curriculum that Ernie had uh, laid out. And the, the blade stuff, the weapon stuff, came from special forces training or from a, a particular method or, or, or what? No, it was military, it was special forces training. Okay. There were batons to the military batons. Yeah. Things like he would adapt the uh, like a technique, like a butt strike. It was a rifle technique where you'd hold the the muzzle end out to your my my left and mm -hmm. across this way with the the, the 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 shoulder stock. Yeah, but we would do that with batons. Okay, interesting. So so then did that in some shape or form uh, prepare you for years later walking into the Kali Academy? You are. Perfect. Yeah, you are so wonderful. Yes, that did. That that gave me a real appreciation for utility, for practical application, yeah. for what works and what doesn't. And and there was no extraneous, you know, stylistic trimmings. It was right. all, you know, go for broke. Right. Yeah, you, you, you mentioned, now all three of you were uh, on the New Iberia Police Department? Yes, sir, we were. Wow. And, um, and, and it says in your bio again that, that you were all self-defense instructor, um, police self-defense instructor. Yes, now, there was certification at the time. The organization doesn't exist anymore, but okay. Robert Trias was uh, one of the... Uh, oh, a USA Goju? Yeah, uh, I don't know if that was his... Robert, his, Robert his Trias, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, he was one of the signatories of the certificates that we've gotten. Okay. All right, so, so this is police self-defense. This is self-defense for officers. Law enforcement, yes. Okay, yeah. okay. Suspect apprehension, control, handcuffing, weapon retention, uh, all law enforcement related. Oh, you mean Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu? No. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't a thing back then. We're talking 1970, right. six, seven, eight. This is like forever ago. It's so, 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 so now, so why is it a thing now? How come it's a thing now? Um, it, it's it's the martial art du jour, I suppose. You know, at one time it was ninjutsu. At one time it was kung fu. At one time, uh. Yeah. Friends come and go, um, and you know, please, please don't get me wrong. I'm not opinionating or denigrating or criticizing. It's uh, things are what they are, as they say. I hate that, but, yeah. but uh, it's popular. It's popular for a good reason. Yeah. It, oh yeah. It has its applications and law enforcement. We didn't do that at the time that I'm I'm describing, but mm -hmm. uh, law enforcement has. Uh, a very uh, good purpose, good use for Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, for any kind of judo, any sort of grappling, controlling, wrestling, right? Yeah, anything that grabs, holds, controls, because the idea with uh, a, a subject, a suspect, an inmate, whoever the person is, you don't want to destroy that person. You want to control him, you know, handcuff him, et cetera, with as little damage or injury as or trauma as possible. Right, yeah. But you see, so but see, that's that's my that's my uh, I, I guess that's that's my question. Obviously, that's something with which officers have had to be concerned since forever. Exactly. So, what are, in in your in your line of work are you are you aware of what it is specifically that people have found that might have been lacking, and now they found an answer in the popular stuff? It's an answer. It's not nearly as popular as, popular as I'd like it to be. 
Um, I have a a pet peeve, mm -hmm. which typical, and I hope there are exceptions, but typical law enforcement training, ongoing in-service training, periodic, uh, annual, semi-annual, however they pattern it, but qualifications with weapons, with sidearms, usually with uh, long arms, shotguns, rifles, whatever, that goes on periodically, let's say once a year, to say okay. But hand-to-hand, -hand, controlling suspects, grappling, striking, you know, that's, that's also permitted, whatever the situation calls for, especially if it gets serious deadly force situations. Right. Um, that is usually ignored after the academy. Now, hmm. the problem, the problem I have with it is after the academy, once you go out into the field, the street, the jail, whatever, you start working, you're going to fight with people a whole lot more often than you're going to shoot them. So it's kind of bass backwards. Right. Right. Okay. And it seems to me the, the, the unarmed hand-to-hand -hand grappling, whatever the term, that should be reinforced at least as much as the firearms stream. Yeah. I, okay. I see. Now, my my pet peeve right the thing that that annoys me so anytime that you hear me if i seem to be to be uh criticizing something else it's just because i'm envious because i think that g condell should 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 never have lost because a lot of people who will hear who will hear this uh discussion between you and me were not around in the 80s a lot of them were born you know, when, after you and I started training. So yes. they have no idea about the popularity level of Jeet Kune Do in no. bygone days. Right, exactly. I, I, all, they, all they know about now is that, oh, for law enforcement, it's Jiu Jitsu and Krav Maga. Right. You know, so, th so the one, I, I mean, it's, it's not really a crusade, but it just annoys the heck out of me. Why do you think J JKD lost that popularity? Um, well, with time, there's bound to be, uh, it, it's, it's bound to have gotten diluted to an extent. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's like a, you know, a wave propagates from wherever the pebble gets the water, it just goes out, it gets thinner, it gets slower, and you know. Right. Uh, one generation after the next, after the next. Um, that's uh that's actually the mission um uh, keepers of the flame is the phrase that jared yes. used yes. with uh with jared's organization and the task the mission is to keep it going as much as we possibly can right as the okay. part of why that's the only thing i can i can smile yeah that brings me to this i i this is i took this directly from your website uh oh <laughs> sifu poti diligently retain the integrity of his mentor's art, preserving its elegant simplicity. Yes. That's what you're talking about, isn't it? That's exactly. And that's why I, one of the, I've got like three or four luckiest days of my life. And one of them is when Fran introduced me to Jerry. Mm -hmm. That was 84. Yes. Two years after you'd started at the Kali Academy. Yes. So whose class were you training in for two years before you, you, you met uh, Sifu Poti? Okay, well, um, in 1980, uh, 81, actually, I was still in Louisiana. I was working, I'd left the police department. I was working for Shell offshore. Okay. And I saw in one of the magazines an ad for a seminar that Dan was, Danny Asano was gonna hold at UC Irvine. This is the summer of 81. And I had decided to go. The funny story about that is, uh, again, offshore, everything is heavy, slippery, dangerous, metal. Right. Accidents happen all the time. Yeah. I had an accident. And uh -huh. I, I broke my wrist. And uh, I had one wrist bone broken. There are eight carpals, little tiny round wrist bones in there. And the distal end of my radius here, it had the... the, the the, re the part that hits the wrist had kind of fractured off okay. and in going down the top and a pin going into the side and 
what they did to stabilize it was put a splint, wrapped it with an ace bandage, and I was to keep it like that for weeks and weeks and weeks. Mm -hmm. That's how it was going to go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> what? You just broke your wrist. You're not going, yes, I am. This, I'm mm -hmm. not going to miss this opportunity. You know, because I was yeah. working offshore. I was getting paid gobs of money, and, you know, I could just take off, man. Yeah. So I got there and uh, had a great time. Uh, met Dan, uh, a number of people that I'd gotten to know later. Um, I think Jeffy Mata was there. I know Chris Kent was there. That was the first time I met Chris. And I know he was there because he was a guy who kind of talked funny. You know, he's still there. <laughs> he sort of stood out. I, yeah, I, yeah I, know, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. It's amazing that he hasn't lost that accent. It's really amazing. It's he's been, been, he's been here for so long. It, I know, but it got lighter. It used to be heavier, but it got lighter. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Chris IT is a wonderful guy. Yeah. Um, okay. I, I, need, I need to mention a special person. Because of my injury, um, the, the, the ace bandage held on a splint so my wrist wouldn't move. And the best I could do with uh, Kali using sticks because he kind of dan kind of went over the whole um he hit the high points of, yeah. of Kali, Academy's, Kali academy's curriculum the best i could do with my right hand was to wedge a rattan baton between my palm i didn't have full control of my fingers between my palm and the splint and just hold it there and i was doing my best the problem was i was not going as fast as i uh should have been going and w whichever partner i had I was doing that person a disservice. There right. was one of Dan's group. Her name is Debbie Frausto, and she took me aside and very patiently walked me through all of the routines and the techniques that yeah. everybody else was going for. Yeah. And, um, and she took the time to do that. And for the whole time I was there, and to this day, I am eternally grateful to her. And I don't think I ever got the chance to. Um, to thank her properly. Oh, yeah. Wow. That's, that's, that's a great. You, so you, you were there two years before I got there because mm. I went out to Irvine in 83. Yeah. Yeah. It, now, now you said you left the police, you left um, law enforcement and went to work for Shell? Yes. I was there only five years and uh, I got an offer I couldn't refuse, let's say. But I was ah. with for two years. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, and in uh, 82, I, I, the seminar was in 81, flew mm -hmm. back home, decided I'm going to LA, I'm going to train with those guys, and I packed up everything. So I moved out there in 82, October-ish of 82. Okay. And, and I started with uh, Dan at the uh, Filipino Kali Academy. Did you go back into law enforcement when you got there? Oh, no, the fastest job I could get, because I didn't have a job when I got to, uh, when right. I, the fastest job I could get was a security job, and it turned out to be a really great one. I was working uh, in the government district, this building downtown LA. It was an in-house um, department. It was a department of the building staff. It wasn't like a, a, a contract agency, that sort of thing. Okay. They paid really well, and uh, I stayed there for quite some time, and uh, trained you know when i was off duty okay Started. right okay but right so but the original question was whose class were you training in i just remembered that <laughs> ah oh right? well um dan taught some classes and uh chris taught some classes and um fred thompson oh, i'm sorry fred thompson is apology bud thompson mm -hmm. um I remember there was a, a, a great guy, uh, Freddie Jin, I believe is his name. He was yep. a boxer. Yep. Yeah, Freddie Jin was there. Tim, uh, Tim Tackett, um, Paul Vunak, uh, Jeff Imada. Okay. Um, but, but most of the classes were, were, were Dan, Chris, and Bud. I see. Okay. So, 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 Sifu Poteet didn't have a class at that time? No, Jerry right. had left. Had left the, oh, okay. I see. Yeah, the academy um, a couple of years before. I okay. think, you know, the, maybe a few years before, late 70s, 80, 81, something like that. Right. Okay. All right. So, okay. So then, so, all right. I get it. So then you're introduced to him mm -hmm. and everything changes? Well, um, 
Unfortunately, a few years later, the Filipino Colony, Colony Academy closed, mm -hmm. and they were going from there across the Harbor Freeway in Carson to the IMB. Right. You know, Richard and Dan started that with a guy named uh, Martinez. That was Steve, Steve Martinez. Martinez. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I followed Dan over there. I wanted to stick with Dan. Mm -hmm. And uh, he didn't stay long. Richard stayed at the IMB. And Dan went to first Culver City, and then he opened a place in the marina. I just followed Dan right there. That's where I met Fran. Oh, okay. Okay. And, uh, yeah, Fran and I worked out and got to be friends, and we had our, our, little, our little clip that we piled around with, and we went out to dinner sometimes and had a great mm -hmm. time. Okay. And uh, by that point, I had met my wife. Well, she was my girlfriend at the time. Mm -hmm. And I had started looking into law enforcement again started testing with various agencies. Uh, but I ran into a little problem. My, my girlfriend, Maria, didn't want me to get back into law enforcement. So whenever I started testing, she, I'd get so far, and it was written, there was the physical agility, there was the medical exam. There's a series of tests that they uh, run you through before you can get an academy appointment. But I would get only so far into the process, process and, and uh, she would dissuade me. And I was okay. I still had that great security job, so it wasn't doing too bad. But um, it was, it was um, turned out to be impossible to get back into law enforcement the whole time I was in L.A. So, okay. But, uh, yeah, I met Fran at uh, Dan's um, marina school. And... Um, and we hit it off, and uh, I was in, I, I, what I wanted to do is go back to college. I went to school for a little while in Louisiana, but I, I didn't graduate. I wanted to go back to college, went to, back to school. So I quit training, so I went back to school. And I didn't see Fran for a time. So after about maybe six months or so, I was at work, my office building downtown, and one of the facilities in that complex, that office complex, was a basement exhibit hall, if you will. And we would uh, rent the space out for people who would uh, have different kinds of trade shows. Um, sometimes the, uh, the bar, California State Bar, would hold their two-day-long bar exams down there, that sort of thing. But there was a show at one time of uh, different... Um, crafts, uh, arts, uh, various other things. But Fran had a friend who was participating. And at some point, she must have seen me walking around because she said, hey, Bernie, da, 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 da. we started talking. Right. And she said, I want you to meet somebody. <laughs> so she walked me back downstairs into the exhibit hall and introduced me to Jerry. You know, hi, how are you? So, you know, Fran had told him all about me and, you know, uh, uh, he, uh, he was great. We just, we just hit it off immediately yeah. and uh, arranged um, a meeting where we could sit and talk and, you know, see if we could, you know, start training. And, and that's how it happened. And that continued for 12 years, 90 till 96 or... or yeah, steadily. I think that's what I read. Right. Yeah. 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 It was steady once a week, and toward the end of that period, I started helping him with uh, training other people who would come in to visit and that sort right. of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What? Can you remember what your first training session with him was like? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. I'm starting to lose those kinds of details. <laughs> yeah. You know, I didn't know that he. Um, I didn't know that he actually met Bruce Lee in Oakland. Yeah, it was the early sixties. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't know that. I knew that that he was the second person. The first person to join was Daniel Lee, correct? The Chinatown School, yes. Right. So were the two? Did the two of them become like like fast friends because of that? Do you know? Mm, I don't. Know. Yeah, I, I, I wonder. I wonder if because I know that they appeared. On a, in a magazine uh, article sometime, I, I forget when, but you know, it's like during the, during the days of uh, Inside Kung Fu, mm -hmm. you know, the, the two of them were the cover story. 
annually so, and yeah and yeah so i i wonder if they, if they became like best buddies because they were number 1 and number 2 awesome. i mean who else, who else would they have trained with they, they had to train with each other people yeah they both have <laughs> guys so that was working for them right yeah i got to met dan dan lee only a couple of times and and it was more social than anything mm -hmm. but uh, i didn't get to train with him which you know yeah was a great loss but yeah yeah, um, you t oh, I, I wanted to ask you about this too, because um, I, I looked up uh, Sifu Potit on um, the internet movie database. Yes. Um, and because it says on, on your, your website that you, you helped him out with, uh, you know, choreography and storyboarding and what have you. Mm -hmm. So did you work on all these on um, street crimes, dragon, cull the conqueror, soldier, time cop? Are those titles familiar? Yes, not Time Cop, not Street Crimes, but Dragon with Jason, Jason Scott Lee, mm -hmm. um, Call the Conqueror uh, storyboards. They would describe the fight scenes, mm -hmm. and uh, storyboard is like a like a, a drawing. You, it's it's in a frame, pretty much the same aspect ratio as a uh, movie screen, yeah, which is wider than it is tall, and um, it uh, it's a drawing of the action, you know. Mm -hmm. you know frame by frame, shot by shot, that sort of thing. And you can, directors usually put them on the wall and they're here's what I'm gonna do, here, here, that sort of thing. Uh, Soldier was the same thing, it was also Jason, he shaved his head for that one. Mm -hmm. uh, Cause he was the bad guy. He's playing right. the bad guys. He's a, he's a bad guy and the whole I'm coming up. What's this guy's problem? <laughs> he's good at it. <laughs> right, exactly. He was the bad guy on Hawaii Five-0 a few years ago. Yeah, Dirty oh man, oh God. <laughs> um, <laughs> Where, where did where did uh, Sifu Jerry get his expertise in 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 that stuff from? In choreography, yeah. Um, he he's not the only one. Um, but that's true. Yeah, Bruce had had pulled Dan and Asano into it for stunt work and stuff, and he's in you know the Game of Death for a fight mm -hmm. scene. And Jeffy uh, Jeffy Mata. Mm -hmm. who one of Dan's senior guys. He got mm -hmm. like choreography. He does the Jason Bourne films and all that stuff. Um, there were all kinds of um, interconnections and cross-pollinations of people knowing people. The film industry is not a, a larger group of people. Right. And uh, I guess phone calls were made and meetings were held and he just got involved in it. And he yeah. understood uh, cinematic choreography which is very different from real fighting real fighting is not very attractive mm -hmm. the, the, the punches are short the kicks are low it's um it's fast usually somebody well peppered will not last more than 20 seconds or so but for a film you have to be you know wide and arcing and visual and the kicks have to be high and you gotta leap and jump and yell and the fights last for 10 minutes yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> There's no elegant simplicity. <laughs> Not, you got you to jazz it up. You got to make it exciting. Right. Yeah, that, yeah, that, I mean, no, no, that is, that is true. Um, so did he ever talk to you about the, that, that exact ju uh, juxtaposition, you know, between here's the stuff that, or did you ever have a discussion about that? Like while okay. you guys were working on stuff? Uh, about uh, the difference between yeah you know, um, you know the theatrical the theatrical JKD versus the functional JKD oh yeah yeah we talked yeah. about that. yeah you know, yeah they they described it to me so I could draw it and then also act it out with uh, oh so you were the artist yes I did the storyboards call the conqueror and soldier and you know. oh well wait maybe I should look your name up on the internet movie database as well. No, no, no. I, I was strictly sidelined. I <laughs> didn't get that involved in it. Yeah. No. Okay. All right. Okay. So that explains that explains the the draft board behind you. Yes. Yeah. That's that's what I used. You're still yeah, okay. I get it. Wow. All right. That also explains why your website is called Vern Rochon Arts, not even martial arts. I noticed that. No, I haven't added any other art form. But there are graphics. Um, I do. I've done music on occasion, mm -hmm. you know, like misspent youth. But <laughs> <laughs> in fact, the last thing I did publicly 
was uh, I serenaded my wife for our wedding. Oh, sweet. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Oh, man. A yeah, renaissance but, man. <laughs> but none of that is on the website. I don't know if right. I, will, I may, but we'll see. Okay. Um, okay. So, so now let me go back to your, to the, um, the wording on the website. Cause I'm assuming that you wrote all mm -hmm. the text on your website. Okay. So combat training derived from this observation and design along the following par parameters enables a practitioner to be extraordinarily versatile in his or her response to an attack. So let's say somebody reads that on your website. They go, Hmm, I like how that sounds. I want to go train with this guy. What do you do to illustrate or demonstrate that, that principle? The principle simply, in other words, uh, and, and this is why I, I, I was so lucky to get with Jerry for all, the, uh, the, for all those times. Uh, Jerry, in, in approaching his teaching, his martial art, that way he he stuck stuck to bruce's philosophy of the value of simplicity directness yeah. and still it seems incongruous but the simplicity the directness are expressions of things that are fixed values for example a physical fixed value is the shortest distance between two points is a straight line. Okay. You know, that's true no matter where you go. It's, it's, it's part of physics. Mm -hmm. uh, another is your, your dominant hand. Your dominant side is typically held forward. Why? Because it's closer to the target. It doesn't have to travel as far. It gets there sooner. It's harder to stop. Uh, if it's your left hand, then your left side's forward. Hand, foot. Um, those simple uh, action is faster than reaction. That's another one. Just, just things that are true no matter what. No matter what, yeah. Now, those elements can be expressed individually. In fact, I have found that it's impossible to not express individually because everybody is different. Everybody has fingerprints, but nobody's fingerprints are exactly the same. Mm -hmm. So you have the immutable, universal, fixed factors, uh, whether it's physical or biological, expressed individually from person to person. Mm -hmm. And that was the imperative, especially as Bruce Lee lived and worked whatever path he took whatever arts he observed and studied and uh examined that seemed to be the direction he was headed uh we all know his mantra was to simplify daily decrease not daily increase right pairing the elements of his art down to basic simple direct essentials it's those direct essentials that enable maximum adaptability. It's, it's like if you have a, rather than have a key ring with 10 keys on it, have one key that can reshape itself. Hmm. Um, That's an image. Here's, here's, how about this? There are, in the English language, there are 26 letters. And a short list of grammatical rules. From that very small list of items, hundreds and hundreds of thousands of mm -hmm. books have been written. Right. You and I can take those same 26 letters and write whatever we want. Yeah. Chopin, sheet music. Right. I was just gonna. I was. I was just gonna ask if you didn't go to music. I was gonna take you there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Years ago, Frederick Chopin sat down and he wrote his his music. He wrote his 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 uh, nocturnes and and they are written forever. They're not going to be changed. Mm -hmm. 
but I can sit down at a piano and play it. And then you can sit down and play it. And we're never going to play it the same mm -hmm. because we're different people. Right. Yeah. Okay. How about this? You take 10 engineers and you separate them, isolate them. Nobody sees anybody else. And you give them a task. I want you to design me a car that is as aerodynamic as possible. It slips through the wind. Do the best you can. Make right. it simply. Now, engineers go through training, go to college, graduate, et cetera, et cetera, and, and they study physics, they study math and formulas and calculations and whatever. And uh, as we talked about before, physics are physics, you know, the laws of physics, gravity, et cetera, longest distance, two point straight line, aerodynamic flow, all of that mathematic uh, formulation has always been worked out. And, 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 and they're the same. I mean, that's what they teach in school. You're not going to screw with the numbers and change right. things. Yes. Yeah. They will take that training, that, that, that math and the, and the physics laws, and they will, each person, design the most aerodynamic car they can. Mm -hmm. Once they're done, three things are true. One, each person is going to use the same principles, the same math, the same physics, the same aerodynamics. One. Two, in spite of them using the same training and the same math and the same everything, every car is going to be slightly different. Yeah. And three, in spite of the fact that every car is slightly different, they're all gonna be as aerodynamic as hell. And that's the idea of taking fixed, universal, constant, elemental factors mm -hmm. and expressing them individually. Right. As opposed to a style here and a style there. Styles tell you you have to do certain things a certain way and you got to do certain things different other ways over here in this style. And, right. and, and Bruce's ideas were not about style. You know, he said if, if you understand movement, yeah. you, you don't need style. But, but now, okay. And Jerry taught that and that's what I loved about him. Um, his his method is his his mentality. He wanted to continue to focus on Bruce's path. Yeah, but that erudite and eloquent description and explanation that you just gave is that a boon or a hindrance to the understanding of like regular people? It, you, you, you see where I'm going with this. You said understanding. Is it something easy to explain after first hearing it? Probably not. So is it even is it even something easy to understand? So so it's not easy to explain after first hearing it. Is it easy to understand when you do first hear it? Or is or is or is Jeet Kune Do destined just for a certain type of individual who is prepared? to do the hard work to come to that level of understanding? I think that's true, largely. Uh, it's certainly not for everybody. Yeah. That distresses me, I have to be honest. Yeah, it's, it's not a mass market art. I don't think it ever has been. So then how do we, how, so then how do we, <laughs> so it goes back to my earlier question then, how do we <laughs> regain that because at one point it was it was all over inside kung fu. Yes. So, I mean, and you, here's what here's what distresses me. This is my pet peeve. You go to a room of people, right? And you go, okay. So and they go, oh, so you're a martial artist, right? And they go, okay. So what what art? And you go, uh, Jeet Kune Do. And they go, oh, what's that? You go, okay. Well, you never heard of Jeet Kune Do. They go, no. I go, okay. You ever heard of Bruce Lee? Well, of course. A hundred percent of the people in the room will have heard of Bruce Lee. They know Bruce Lee, the entertainer, the movie star. Yeah, God. Kato, Enter the Dragon. But they haven't gone any further than that. You know, they, they haven't been curious as to right. you know, yeah. what it is he's doing that makes him popular. So we just have to accept that and deal with it, huh? It, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I had a, a more encouraging answer. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, it's it's like it's like um, 
it's like me and my my discussions with my younger students like we had another epic one last night after class and they're like you're not doing enough on instagram and i'm like i know right and and i i, I admit to them i resent the hell out of the fact that social media is important i don't want it to be <laughs> right you know so I want I, I want you to know to be for the masses. I <laughs> yeah. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, you know, you know. I mean, look, it because it's so it's so great and and not forget being great in art. Just the Jeet Kune Do experience, man. Yes. You know. Yeah. So, <laughs> but that's my beef. <laughs> I, I I don't know I don't I don't have a solution for that one. <laughs> yeah. Um. Hey. Whatever. Hey. Let me. Ask, I would love. This is uh because we're talking about movies and what have you. I want to ask you something, right? Um. Do all police officers, right? Like officers, do they all want to become detectives? The way it seems in the in the in TV and in the movies. No. Some people are perfectly happy. Uh, working traffic, working patrol. Uh, but they're always talking about the sergeant's exam. That is is a way to advance if you want to advance. It's it's. I think your question addressed what what do all do all of them want it? And no, not all of them want it, but some do. Yeah. Uh, I, I've advanced a lemma sergeant right now. Uh, I don't know if I'll go further. That depends on a number of things that. Uh, I'd better not discuss here. <laughs> um, <laughs> hey, can you can can you discuss how ultimately you got you you got back into law enforcement? I mean, with your wife's blessing, I assume. He, yes, after we left LA, that was uh, two uh, February January February two thousand seven. We moved here, and um, I was I, I got a security job here. It's all I had at the time. Mm -hmm. And I once again took the step after having given up several years before, a number of years before. And I took the step because I heard that the agency I'm with, Bear County Sheriff's Office, had no age limit. Now, that's important because the whole time we were in LA, I kept testing, repeating, restarting, hoping she'd change her mind. Right. Never did. <laughs> uh, time was passing and and I was getting older and I knew that I thought all uh, back then agencies had a cutoff an age cutoff you had to be it, it varied uh, 35 38 32 by the time you entered the Academy and whatever their line was I knew there was a line and I knew I was getting close to crossing it and by the time we moved here my thinking was that ship has sailed right but I found out that the sheriff's office here didn't have an age limit. So I said to myself, I said, let me try again, just for grins. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if it was, we never got really deeply into the discussion. I don't know if it was because it was no longer Los Angeles. Uh, it was, um, ah. right. it, 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 it was gonna initially not be Street Patrol, it was going to be, because it's Sheriff's Office, they run the, the jail everywhere. Sheriff's offices run the jail. It was going to be uh, at least some time, several years at least, working inside with inmates. It was going to be, was going to be outside. But anyway, the upshot is she said, sure, go ahead. That's how they that. <laughs> and I said to myself, to myself, finally. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. What? What? Okay. What about this? What about um, favorite um, police op cop TV shows? Ooh. What, what, what? Law and Order. Really? Law and order, yeah. And funny enough, this goes back a ways. You might be too young for this, but one of the best TV shows. I mean, if the the top three or top five on my list, one of them is Gunsmoke. It's a Western. Oh, uh, yeah. I, I, James, J, uh, James Arness. James Arness, Amanda yeah. Blake, Ben Curtis, Milburn mm -hmm. Stone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 I know of it. 
<laughs> Look it up on IMDb. I did. <laughs> I, I know of it. Okay. But now this one, this one I saved for, for last, right? As we wrap this up. Okay. Um, because New, New Orleans actually has, um, I mean, I, I know you're New Iberia, which is like 100 miles away. Exactly. Have you, but, but New Orleans um, holds a, a, a very special place in, uh, in my heart. I, 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 that was... Um, That's a fun town. Yeah, it, it, it was. But it was because of an Inasano seminar. Mm. that um yeah that i assisted at and and there's still people that i'm friends with this was 1991 yeah and there's still people that i'm friends with you know who who talk about 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 that his okay. appearance there and what have you so one of my favorite law enforcement louisiana movies is the big easy i've not seen that <gasps> I need to look it up. You're kidding. I've, I've not seen the Big Easy. Uh, Big Easy. That's easy to remember. Yeah. But I have to, it's a, I'm sure it's on Netflix or Amazon Prime or something, but I'm going to find yeah, it. Yeah, it's, um, it's um, Ellen Barkin and mm -hmm. um, uh, Randy Quaid. Is it Randy Quaid or Dennis Quaid? One of the Quaid boys. Yeah. Yeah. I'm surprised you never heard of that one. It's I from like your era, I'm sure. Yeah, I, I like film. I just haven't seen many of them. <laughs> <laughs> definitely going to look that up. Yeah, yeah, it it it's um, it's an old one, but it 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 it, it was pretty good. And it, it, you know, it since I I knew what they were talking about, you know, because I I had spent I spent a fair amount of time after the uh, because of the people that I met, I mm -hmm. spent a fair amount of time uh, going back to uh, to New Orleans. Um, over a few years. Um, so what are, I mean, I, I didn't want, I didn't want to talk about like you can know politics and, and, and uh, controversy and all that stuff with you, but what are your, is there such a thing for you as hopes for, for the future of Jeet Kune Do? Is there such a thing? Yes. Um, I, I, uh, I think it's, too much, too much to ask for, like we were kidding about earlier. Maybe you weren't kidding, but for it to go mass market and get that popular, uh, I think those days are gone. And um, I don't want it to go away. I am, I am teaching people. I, I have a list of people I need to contact. Um, my current list of students is is small. I, I don't like it to get too big. I'll, I'll teach one or two at a time. That sort of thing. Right. Uh, because I don't want to get, I don't want to thin it out. Mm -hmm. I like, I like to focus in, in quality more than quantity. That's mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. And, um, from there it's, it's, it becomes, and it has to become exponential because one person that I teach, I've got a, several that I've, I've taught to full instructor, they will teach others. Right. And of every 10 or 15 who sign on with me or, 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 or other instructors, whoever it is, one or two might stick with it. But uh, that's, that's about the best I think we can hope for. Yeah. I don't think it's going to go away. Um, Bruce, in his tremendous wisdom, wrote a lot. A lot of his stuff is, is written and recorded for posterity, including his films. Um, his films weren't all unrealistic. In fact, a lot of it was um, quite realistic. My, my favorite fight scene in the, in the world, you know, bar none, for example, is his battle with the guards in End of the Dragon. Ah, okay. But for a number of reasons. The, uh, the, 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 the dungeon one or the courtyard one? The dungeon. Ah. It, it, it includes so many elements. Uh, it, there's a couple of one-on-ones, but he's got multiple opponents. Things that happen in real life, I mean. Right. Uh, like in real life, a lot of your fights are going to be perhaps, you know, not just one guy, but two or three. Multiple opponents. Uh, he dealt with an animal. You know, there was the snake. Yeah. Um, he uses weapons. Um, this one, 
you'd never thought you'd see Bruce Lee do this, but remember the point where he turns to the elevator and he's opening the doors and he turns back and he fights and that's when Jackie Chan comes and yeah. when he turns, when he gets rid of those guys, he turns back to the elevator, it opens, there's 5,000 guys in there. Right. What does Bruce Lee do? He turns and he runs. Yes. Running is very often a good idea <laughs> in a combat situation. <laughs> right. But, but because of all those, those various elements that do happen in, in real situations, uh, and, and again, done so well. Mm. Huh. And I've yeah. got a, other, other favorites, but that, that's my favorite. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, I've, I've always thought about that one. Like, I, I love how he transitions from simultaneous parry and hit, you know, left and right. And then it's just like too many of them. So he gets the staff as an equalizer. Yes. But then his mobility is limited with the staff. So he takes off and then he, and then he gets double stick, which is more, you know, more mobility and more versatile. Yeah. yeah. Huh. More options. Yeah, there's so much to learn from studying this guy, huh? <laughs> <laughs> hey, did you ever see? Um, it's on the YouTube. It's a, I, I think it's a British guy named uh, Rob Ager, and he does um, a cinematic breakdown of the fight scene from Fist of Fury, the the when when Bruce Lee goes over to the dojo after they had visited the Kung Fu school, the sick men, the sick men of Asia scene. Yes. I have not seen that. I will have to look for it. I'll say, I'll, I'll, when, when, we, when we hang up, I'll, I'll, send you, I'll send you the clip. It is masterful. It's about a 15 minute video, but he talks in depth about, I mean, just, just like, like simple things like how Bruce Lee does a technique and keeps his arm extended so that so that you have time to register i mean if you you'll love it let me let me know your opinion of it um, once once you've watched it hey you're back uh yeah hang on one second okay let me see if I gotta make sure that they can uh... you're obviously gonna do a bit of editing yeah now now they're telling me something about not being able to record your audio which doesn't make any sense i can talk louder <laughs> and i hear you fine so i don't think i don't think that's correct that doesn't make any sense to me um well okay well i, I i'm not going to take up that much more of your time because actually that last question before I have all <laughs> Before our little mishap, mm -hmm. um, I had asked you if, you know, what, what your hopes for Jeet Kune Do uh, would be. And then the second part of that question was going to be, what were your personal plans? But I think you already started indicating, you know, yeah. what, what your, your personal plans um, would be. Yes. With regards to most students. In. Right. So, so, so regarding the, the, preservation and the per perpetuation of Jeet Kune Do. Yes, as yeah. Jerry taught me, which as Jerry said to me, as Bruce taught him. Right, yeah, yeah. You know, I, I think that that is, that's so important um, to maintain that lineage because everybody else appears to be proud of their lineage. Mm -hmm. you, know, what, you know, one of the things that, that um, and I keep trying to keep my my language clean because you're on the other <laughs> side. Um, so another pet peeve of mine is when everybody jumps on this, oh, but Bruce Lee said Jeet Kune Do, it's just a name. Don't fuss over it. My take on that is that 
they misinterpret what he said. They think, they think he's saying don't fuss over Jeet Kune Do, the mm -hmm. art. Right. I think he's saying don't fuss over the name. Don't fuss over what you call it. Right. Well, I don't think he would be so dismissive of his, his lifetime body of work to say, don't fuss. Do you, you get, do, do you agree? I, I, I don't want to put you on the spot or anything, but. No, 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 no I, I agree. Completely. Does that make sense? It, it, it certainly does. Um, the thing about Bruce's art is that it's, 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 it's lim no limitation. It's limitless. It, it's like, it's like the, the, the 26 letters can write millions of books, you know, right. to infinity. Yeah. Um, and he understood that vast potential. But at the same time, in practical, everyday shirt sleeve terms uh, in conversation, it's awkward to refer to it without it having a handle. It, right. it was a lot more easy, a lot more convenient, a lot more, um, it was easier to convey in conversation, in instruction, in class, et cetera, when you call it something. Yes. Of course. Uh, he, he was afraid that people would, would latch onto the name and use that name to draw boundaries around it and limit it. Mm -hmm. that's, what he, that's what he disliked, I believe. Did Sifu Poti ever tell you anything that, that was indicative of the deep understanding that Bruce Lee had of human nature? And then did Sifu Poti himself have that same deep understanding of human nature? Exactly, yes. Yeah, yeah, we talked about it. Yeah, he, he said Bruce was frighteningly perceptive of, of people and their 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 personalities and peccadilloes and uh, also their their talent and their dedication and their sincerity. You know, mm -hmm. character character was was paramount paramount with with Bruce and Jerry. Um, it was it was. Uh, of, of, of tremendous importance that a person was was a good individual yes and and sincere and uh that was something they paid a lot of a lot of attention to uh and i know uh that jerry did personal experience and jerry said uh that was something that bruce um took uh held in high regard also right yeah see that's why to me it's it's imperative that I do stuff like this because mm. if we don't talk about it, then it, it will um, virtually disappear. It won't actually disappear, but virtually it'll, 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 it yes. will disappear from, from the martial art landscape. And, and there's just, there's too much that went into it. There's too much that's still going on. And mm -hmm. there's still so much more that we can do that so I, I I that's my way of saying thank you for spending some time um, with me this evening. Yeah, you are you're the first um, of the Potit lineage to accept a, a request from me to oh. come on the program. Yeah, so I'm hoping that your um, your your fellow uh, uh, Potit JKD members will go. Oh. He didn't do too bad of a job with Jern. <laughs> you screw it up. Right. <laughs> Jern wasn't a complete jerk. <laughs> uh, um, but on that note, is, is there anybody you can think, I mean, within or, or outside of the, the Poteet lineage, um, that you would like to see me uh, get on the program? Uh, Eric Carr has been I tried. Headlines. Yeah. You tried? Yeah, I got in touch with him, but I think he just got real busy with the 628 college he's thing. a busy guy yeah yeah <laughs> but he's on my he's on my list for sure and i'll keep trying i assure you of that good yeah um, if, if I, the best way oh i'm sorry go ahead please don't care, please. no i was gonna ask you what, what's the best way for somebody to get in touch with you just vernroshan.com probably uh yeah the website uh my email is on the website and okay. um, yes okay. and then facebook and what have you yes okay all right so were you gonna were you gonna tell me somebody else i was gonna say if i can think of somebody else um, oh yeah then I just will. message me yes definitely for sure 
All right. Okay. All right. Okay. Go do Friday night stuff with your family. <laughs> Ignore me from now on. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you oh, my pleasure. Me. Thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate it. All righty. All right. Okay. Take care. Bye-bye. Okay, that's it for today. Feel free to share, like, comment, ask questions if you want. Uh, Vern and I will review everything I have to post in. Uh, follow me on Twitter at uh, Dwight Woods and on Instagram at Dwight D. Woods. Uh, quick heads up at ilovejikundo.com, the Quick Skill Series Volume 1 still available. Volume 2 will be produced during uh, 2020. Um, what else is there? Okay, coming up next Friday, March uh, 6th, will be episode number 114 with uh, Ed Stahl of, uh, I have to find out from him if it's Metrolina or Metrolina uh, Martial Arts. But that will be next Friday at our regular uh, 6 p.m. Uh, Eastern time. And I'm pretty sure we'll be live on, back live on Facebook or on the YouTube itself. All right, so some of you I'll see uh, next Wednesday for the I Love Jeet Kune Do broadcast. The rest of you I'll see uh, maybe next Friday for another episode of the Jeet Kune Do Dialogues. This is Dwight Woods, the Jeet Kune Do Rebel, signing off. Have a great weekend. See you soon. Take care. This is Fran. This is Jerry's wife. These two are the masters of the martial arts.